Uh, meningitis is when a bacteria or virus um, goes into your spinal cord fluid and then around the fluid around your brain, the meninges. And then when it grows, it then causes damage. So it's really something which causes uh, meningitis. But in fact, the meningitis which we're speaking about now is caused by a particular bacteria called uh, Neisseria meningitidis or the meningococcal bacteria. In fact, there are 12 strains and five of the most important. They are different letters of the alphabet. And so A, which we're talking about today, is responsible for 85, 90% of disease. And then we've got B, for which there isn't a vaccine licensed yet. C, their vaccines, Y and W. And so different areas have different strains. But the biggest burden of disease is in the poorest part of Africa, the meningitis belt, and there it's almost entirely group A disease. We're talking about, I would say, um, in terms of uh, epidemic, we're talking about more than 10 per 100,000, but in fact much higher. And in the case of group A, it comes in epidemics. And these epidemics are maybe uh, 7 to 14 years. And the last very big epidemic was in 96. And then there were over 25,000 deaths documented. So obviously many more. And then with every death, you have several cases where it's, because it's infected the meninges, you get uh, damage. And it could be loss of hearing, uh, mental retardation, well, meningitis itself is very dangerous because the initial symptoms are not specific. And so children can die from meningitis even in hospitals. In the case of the uh, meningitis belt, it happens during the dry, windy season. And it's massive epidemics, huge epidemics, and it just sweeps through the society. And because there's little infrastructure, there's not much you can do about it. Well, they say there are 300, 400 million people at risk. But it all depends on uh, that actual ep epidemic year. Mortality would be uh, 10, 15%. And uh, mortality, obviously, for the meningitis in the developed world is less because of better control. So there is a licensed vaccine against three of the main strains, A, C, Y, and W. And that's a, a polysaccharide vaccine. In other words, they've grown up the bacteria, they've taken off the polysaccharide, purified it, and that is then the anti antigen, which means antibody generator. And so there is a vaccine, but that polysaccharide vaccine doesn't work in young children. And secondly, uh, the vaccination is short-lived. So the way they've tried to deal with these epidemics is once it has started, they try and do vaccination while it's happening, which is very difficult in terms of infrastructure and often too late. So for every death, you have several cases where the, uh, particularly the child is permanently affected, either loss of hearing, motor control, or mental retardation. So this is a disease which you want to prevent. So um, there are licensed polysaccharide vaccines uh, which have been available, but they are inadequate. In terms of the conjugate vaccines, they have been developed for the developed world, but no one had developed a vaccine which was affordable specifically for Mene disease. And that is because to develop a vaccine requires enormous resources. And if you can't sell the vaccine for $25, $50 a dose, then it's very difficult for a company to develop the vaccine. It's purely because of the Gates Foundation. So the Gates Foundation identified a need. They identified that there's a technology, and this is the conjugate vaccine technology, to make a vaccine, but they needed to find someone to make it. And so they then donated 70 million to set up the meningitis vaccine project, which is a collaboration between a health, global health NGO based in Seattle called PATH and the World Health Organization. And this is called the Meningitis Vaccine Project. And so this was then formed in 2001. And their goal was to develop and license a meningitis vaccine uh, to eliminate epidemic meningitis in the meningitis belt. 
Well, my involvement is that I've had big pharma experience because I used to work for Novartis vaccines and I worked on licensing their Men's C vaccine in the UK in 99. And one uses a similar technology for the Group A. And although we worked on Group A at Novartis, we never took it further because there was no financial incentive. And so um, what happened was MVP found an Indian manufacturer who was interested in gaining the conjugate technology. And so they then uh, promised to develop a licensed vaccine at 40 US cents a dose in exchange for assistance and finance during the development. And so I got involved. I joined a team of technical advisors in 2004 after they'd finished the phase one and when they were preparing for the phase two material and they had some technical issues. Well, after uh, making the vaccine, making phase two, doing tr trials, making phase three and testing, it was then licensed by the local Indian uh, regulatory authority. And then in June, the World Health Organization pre-qualified the vaccine. And this means that it's been given a certificate of approval and so charities like UNICEF, MSF can buy it and distribute it. So this vaccine offers, hopes, offers hope to millions in Africa, which has been in the, reported in the news. And then the big item was when they started vaccination of Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger of 33 million people on the 6th of December 2010. And so I think they've uh, vaccinated about 25 million of those people until now and the hope is to vaccinate them before the epidemic uh, comes, which is around about now. And this is, um, the finance was available to vaccinate 33 million, but obviously by 2015, they want to vaccinate at least 300 million people in that region, because this is only carried by people. So if you vaccinate people, as many people as possible, then the bacteria has nowhere to go and there's a chance of eliminating the disease.